Happy Wednesday, Legends. We've got a few buy, hold, sell questions to answer here, really, because there's a lot to do in this round, and it really depends how many boosts you've already used. And given I've had a bit of a struggler of a start and have used eight trades so far, it's probably unlikely I'm going to boost personally in this head-to-head -head side here. But for you, it could be a week to do so. And we'll go through all of the options, starting with our hooking position at the top. And it hasn't really been a fun <laughs> little little run for, for me with those players. So don't don't pick any of the guys I suggest in this hooking position, especially Appy. Obviously, was the buy of the week. He did go up you know, close to 50K there, but it didn't work out perfectly in terms of scoring. I do think he'll bounce back. Obviously, he's one of those guys who'll go 70 or 80 and then go a 40-odd which um, is just how it goes for him there. Damien Cook was massive. Robson, a bit of a lower one for him. 51, still solid. Reedy at 65. So they're all they're all decent. Obviously, you know, Levi was the, the play to hold. With another 46K, he went up after that 68 with a try. So very frustrating situation here. I don't believe anyone would actually need to buy any hookers at the moment. Obviously, Harry Grant's one that you can either buy this week or look to potentially get next week when they get a little bit more of a favorable matchup considering they got the Broncos this week in that one. But uh, yeah, there's not really too many guys that you'd be looking to purchase in the hooking position this week. And yeah, I think we can leave it at that. It's still, Appy's probably going to score the best. I think you do hold Joey Lusick. Hopefully things get a little bit better for him and he doesn't score back-to-back -back 20s, that's for sure. So let's leave the hooking, hooking position at that. In our front row forwards, guys, it is a, an interesting one. Obviously, you know, Terrell May... Still the clear best buy and the best option in the front row forward position. He's averaging the second best behind Adam Fennell Blake, who looks like he might be carrying something. So if you've got Adam, I think he's a clear hold. But yeah, starting to lose some money now. And people look to actually buy him soon. So yeah, don't don't sell him. Jack DeBellin, a, you know, a couple of decent weeks there. Gets him to a 58.8 average. I do think that Flegler would be the guy to target. He's in my side there at 531. I do think he can average closer to that 55 uh, probably closer to the 60 mark. He's up at 69 at the moment, but the odd game with attacking stats, he's had a couple of them to kick things off. They've had a pretty favorable you know, beginning to their season, but he looks to be involved in a lot of it. Obviously, a try assist on the weekend through an offload, which is great, and a try in, in round one. So he's been good. He's probably the second guy on the list. I do think there is la this will be the last opportunity to get Liam Henry. At 334, he has one game before the buy, but it does look like he's worked himself into somewhere near that 35 to 40-ish type of role. Even with Fisher-Harris back, it's not really a slam dunk this week, but I do think it's the last week to you know, to potentially grab him in your side. So yeah, pretty much I've, I'm very happy with the, the front row forwards that I've got. And if you do have Hughes at 243, him starting this week helps him out a little bit. So I even think he's a, he's a hold heading into this week. And then Josh Kerr, if you wanted to grab him, it was last week, I think, was the play. Now that he's up 71K, he'll stop scoring tries very soon. And uh, outside of that, obviously, if you've got Tam Lolo, he's a, he's a sell at this point. Just the up and down minutes is, is frustrating. And yeah, it's not really too much else there. No, no one's really benefiting so far from the you know, the Titan situation with Tino. So um, yeah, I think that's probably it. Fletcher Baker, obviously, a good one last week. And he'll continue to score somewhere in the 45 to... 55 range, you'd imagine, but Haas back soon. Not exactly sure what's going to happen with that, uh, you know, with Baker's situation. I think it's probably worth just holding off on your front row four position in general and spending your trades elsewhere. So let's, uh, yeah, well, Smithy's more of a hold than Tupanua. Now he's on the bench. So let's <laughs> let's trade Tupanua there and let's look right up top. So the top guys you want to be looking at this week, I don't think you can buy Isaiah considering he's got the buy next week. Jackson Ford, when he's holding onto the ball, he's doing good things, but he's up 82K already. So I don't think that's the, the play right now. Even after the 104, Hopgood, just a clear gun you can hold for the season. But again, now when you're looking at some of these gun to our refs, do you look a little bit more to someone who doesn't play Origin and can, you can have across that period there? So Ola Kawatu is probably like a, you know, a decent chance of Origin, but not locked in. So he's definitely someone you could look to push in your side. Did lose a little bit of money last week after his lower score the week before, but a 94 gets him back to a nice average of 73.3. So good stuff for Hamole. A really solid option there. Hosking, if you can cover him this week, I do think you can hold him. He does come in with like a 98 break even the following week. So if you do want to sell, I have no problems with it. 
it, his money making kind of potential has dropped a bit. But if he gets that big minute role, he can still score really well. He's obviously just out this week. So if you have other problems in your team, you can hold. Otherwise, he's a, an easy sell target. Pat Carrigan, he's someone that obviously you get all the way through to around 13. So he could be a guy that you do target just to lock in sort of that 65 to 75 points on a week-to-week basis with the massive minutes that he's providing without Payne Haas and the extra runs that he's commanding. He's very close to 200 meters on a weekly basis there. Murray with the buy in round seven and then Origin, I think you leave him out at the moment. Jeremiah, I think you know a couple of weeks ago was the play. They're going to be all right. They're going to be solid on a week-to-week basis. He could go out and go nuts against Titans, but do you want someone that's going to play Origin bringing them into your side right now? I know it's a while away, but... These are things that if you bring in someone in a more expensive capacity in your 2RF, you want them to be with you playing the majority of games and you know getting close to their average there with up and down, obviously with some scoring there. If you've got Adam Elliott, he's a hold this week. Josh Curran's an interesting one. Obviously, he's gone up 85K if you grabbed on, jumped on like my classic team, uh, my overall team, I should say. Then that's great. Could you buy him this week? I think you still can. Him on the edge, if that's the way that they play it, Likely to be a 65 to 70 minute roll or you know, Katoga comes in and actually plays some middle. So I do suggest Curran as like a 50, 55 to 65 type of average going forward. I think it's a little bit safer now than what it has been the last couple of weeks when he you know, got a little bit lower minutes. Last week was a bit better. So he's a safe one. If you need someone at 507k, Tom Eisenhuth, I think that he's still a solid buy. I would grab Kuypers Paul at 441 over Tom Eisenhuth though, and he was the play last week there for sure. Sean Lane's another interesting one at 474. If you're looking to, at someone to buy, he looked much better last week. So that's a big win for owners of him or anyone looking to grab him in that one. And then you know Joe Chan hasn't been named anywhere. So he's ca- carrying that, that uh, hand injury. So he's someone I think we can just hold and he's got, um, yeah, he's got a little bit of money to make if he can play at least one more game. So I think just hold him for now. Smitty's probably his last kind of points, uh, sorry, last last price increase last week for a while, unless he happens to get any type of attacking stat, which is very unlikely. So Smitty's can can be held or sold. I think it's fine, but I would sell Satili over him first. As I said, Sean Lane's a real solid one. And then, you know, Kurt Mann's kind of made a little bit of his money, what what he's going to provide. Guys like Isaiah Papali'i, and Bateman are two very interesting ones at 577 and 601, 604 there for Bateman. Very cheap. If you wanted to go for that down that route, I think that's a very you know solid play that you can go for. But I think that the best buy of the week around this mid 600s price point is going to be is going to be Eli Katoa. So he has three really solid games there, and that's him there at uh, 186 in three games. For 62 average with no attacking stats so far. At 653, I'm definitely looking at looking at him in my overall team. Uh, I just have enough money. I think I have probably 5k spare for getting Ellie uh, in this one. So he's definitely a good one. Comes up against Jaden Hunt and Ezra Mam. So definitely some you know, missed tackles to be had, you'd say, and a bit more of a target side rather than the other side with with Ricky and and Katoni Stags and the like. So I do see Ellie Katoa being a good buy this week. The draw gets a little bit easier following that as well. They've got all their players back. I think that he's a a really good purchase. And then it's probably, you know, IPAPs and Bateman are very similar, very similar to- uh, token there that you could select any, either of them and, and probably end up okay and yeah, slightly different scores week to week. Both for Moore's an interesting one. I think that selling or holding is completely fine. He's not really going to lose you too much cash with, you know, this type of scoring, but he's not great at the same point, especially with these Titans. He's coming back from the ACL. The Titans are pretty poor. So that's that. And then really the only other one to kind of look at, Aaron Clark is starting this week, but I don't know how long that's going to last. And you know, he's been losing a little bit of cash, not scoring great, so it's no priority. And then you've got Dave Fafita. So going for Fafita down there, who got like 50-odd, wherever it was, 57. He's a, obviously an interesting pickup this week at 832K. I think you can wait another week. There's a good chance that the Cowboys dominate the Titans, but there's also a good chance of feeder off the bench again, though. I just think it's it's a hot, it's a wait and see for him. He could come out and get a try against the lackluster defense of the Cows and um, and still score really well. And Angus Crichton 
He has two games at the moment and an average of 23. So with a high break even, he's not a high priority this week, but he could also come out and do well against the Dogs. I'm just worried about the minutes that he's going to end up with in that side. And then Sean Ward has played the one game so far. I think he's an easy watch as well. And I, you know, even he didn't look great. Like, didn't look like he stood out, but obviously not next to Munster as well last week. So that is the 2RF. Very interesting position at that. Brooksy, Hines, I think... This, this position here, guys, is a very easy holding position. If you have this type this type of combination in Brooks and Hines or Brooks and you know, Cleary and you're looking to hold Cleary, then that's going to be fine. The scoring for Brooks shouldn't be amazing over the next few weeks, but we've bought him for the dual position, for the you know, longevity, him not playing Origin. You're kind of just holding him for a bit of that. You can move between the two positions. The best buy this week in the half position is very, very clearly Sean Johnson. Down 131.6K, down to 662. He still has a 72 break even, I believe. And I think he's going to outdo that over the next bunch of weeks. Very clearly. I think he'll get get himself back up to about a 70 average, averaging about 80-ish over the next you know, month or so. They have a really nice run up until Origin. So I do think SJ is a, a terrific play. The, the, thing here, the thing is here, though, if you wanted to have Johnson and a Hines or a Cleary, that means you can't do the double Heinz Cleary strategy, I don't think, because if you're buying SJ now, you're buying him for the run and you're sticking with him throughout that period. So that's where we're at with, with SJ, in my opinion, at the moment. You could just slot, you know, if you've got Hutchison in there like my team does, then he's a, just a solid one to stick there for now. And you can, um, you know, make further decisions from that. From there, outside of this in the halves position, like, Jerome Hughes is a really solid pickup as well this week, given he's played the two games, averaging 65. I think he will go on a nice run as well. He looked like he was playing really, really well in those two games that he had. So that's that position. In the 5 eighth position, Dylan Brown, not scoring great, losing money at the moment. He's a hold, and so is Lockie Galvin. So if you got either of those two, then hold steady. If you have Plath and Galvin, I would be trading out Plath first because Galvin has the higher upside and is going to go up a lot more cash uh, with that lower break even as well. So if you are selling Plath, you could just put you know, Strange up into that into that 5 eighth position. You could get Hacho up to halfback, bring Luke Brooks down, depending what you have there, uh, for sure. Um, but if you were to bring a 5 eighth in, I don't like really any of them. Metcalf's gone now. Trindle has the buy. He's not really of, of you know, a high importance there. It, it's really it's really slim pickings. It's like, you know, do you back Dearden to come out and continue to absolutely crush it against some of the weaker teams? That's probably the only play. I wouldn't bring in Luke Brooks this week. So, yeah, it's really tough. Maybe, like, you could just play Strange or Hutcho for that one week, as I said, moving things around, um, just to wait until you get... It's obviously two weeks until you get Galvin back. So that's a tough decision that you're going to have to face, unfortunately. For the center wing, we have Val Holmes, I think is going to go nuts this week, which is going to be great. I do think all of the uh, all those Cowboys guys, I'm not sure how Laybutt's going to go, but I obviously own him. I'm going to hold on for one more week and see what he can provide for us, obviously against the Titans. Would be really nice if he could score some points because that last two weeks has been horrendous. But guys that are other, you know, other guys that are purchases this week, you can't look at Tungo or Malatalo. Malatalo, sorry. I do think Ruben Garrick is a longer-term good purchase. I think he's going to be great. Joey Manu sticks out as a good buy this week. He picked up 63 with a disallowed try against Panthers. He had that one you know, light week in round two. But uh, yeah, outside of that, he's played really, really well. And I do think that they have a fairly good run. We're going to want him over Origin. Now's a pretty good week to grab him at 647. If that's you know, what your team allows, that price point, then he'll be really good. Hammer, I do find it a little bit difficult to buy him after he's gone up 91K. He will go up some more, but they're going to have some lighter, you know, yeah, sorry, harder matchups over the next bunch of weeks. And Hammer, I do think, is uh, is going to score somewhere in the 60s range, which is still good, but you're not going to make a hell of a lot of money. And yeah, it's just not really a slam dunk like it was last week, where I think Manu's a better pick now than that of him, Dom Young, these types of guys. Um, Dom obviously scoring really low last week in the low 30s to make him a yeah, 30 last week to get him to 230 through three weeks with 150 in there. So he has the highs, he has the lows in that one. Talakai is a frustrating one. If you brought him in a couple of weeks ago, I was looking at it and um, I am glad I, in the end, I did pick Roger. So a bit of luck there actually. I forgot about that in my overall team. 
he's an interesting one that you could look to potentially move on because obviously the center wing position, it's Blaze Talangi is the cheap guy. But if you're going up top, then I do suggest obviously Manu is the best. Lomax still okay, but Garrick probably the second best. I think he'll overall score really well, but this next two weeks will be a bit harder. So he's probably not a buy this week, but might be either next week or the week after. Panthers players just hold off for now, given they have the buy next week and you probably already have Talon. I think Talon's a hold. Rogers, not a clear buy, but still solid. 612. Um, lay butts a hold. Salmon, you could trade if you want to. Same with Burbo, but I think it's really helpful having that 2RF jewel on at least one of them. Two is even better because you can, you know, if you did need to double up and, and trade trade two, two RFs out and bring those guys up onto your bench there, then that works out really well for you for sure. Dan Gagai returns. Cola with a good score on the weekend with that lovely pass from, from Tommy. Penasini is a worry, and I think that he's a bit more on the sells list just because when he's not with Moses, it's not as good. Uh, but he's easy, he's easily able to, you're able, easily able to hold him as well. In this week, Phil Sami going off with that injury to his ankle. I think you have to sell him. Justin Olam this week, I think is a pure cash grab. Uh, he's got two doubles and averaging 82 and a half. As soon as he goes back to no tries, he'll be back close to the 40 mark, and he won't make enough money. I think, in my opinion, unless he goes, yeah, if he gets one big score in the next two weeks, and that's enough. If he goes 40-40, I saw, you, you see what happened to me with Zach Laybutt. It didn't work out. So that's the worry with that one. Jack Whiten's played the two games, averaging 68.5 uh, there. Did get 34 in the first game and then comes up against the Warriors in this one, which I do think will be hard, but Whiten is looking really good. But coming off a double as well, can we back him to, to continue along that road? And at 529, it's still fairly expensive where I'd rather go to a Joey Manu or something like that for that extra 115K. So yeah, Blaze Talangi is the buy of the week, guys. He's obviously down here at the uh, 115 points total and uh, at 204K, the slam dunk cheapie of the week and is where I would be pushing you. And there's really no one else in that cheaper price that we want to be looking at. Obviously, Sivo playing his uh, first game of the year for those that jumped on. I think Whisperer did. Um for a bit of fun there, good stuff. And then the fullback position, Drinkwater is nowhere near a trade. Latrell's a little bit more of a trade option, but it's a hard one, right? Because you're looking at, if you're trading fullbacks all the time, we see what happens with you know Ponga, you trade him out for a bit of a cash grab, which I did here and it, it just didn't work out. Like Ponga was the hold all along. It depended who you trade him to, right? You could have traded him to Tedesco and you got the massive 140 and then the 47, right? So. Not all of them work out. You could have traded him for Hammer. You could have traded him for Drinky. Drinky's been solid, and he's kind of held price now, which is good. Drinky's a good buy this week. You've obviously got Pappy. is a tremendous buy as well, given he's uh, you know, only played the couple of games. He hasn't even gone up in... Sorry, he's played the three games. He's gone up a little bit in price, but um, nothing crazy from there. Where is the Pat man? I've already gone past him, haven't I? Oh, we're at 276 points. There you go, 240. 691. Up 45K, he'll go up again. He had a very low first game, so that's out of his um, rolling average now. And he'll make a good price jump this week. And if he can continue to average near 80, then he's obviously got a decent amount of money to make. But I suppose, do you want to trade out a Latrell or a Drinky to a Pappy? I feel like there's enough issues in our side that making that sideways swap is, is not worth it enough. Like people are looking at potentially trading out Tommy this week. And I don't think that... Yeah, that's something that could not work out as well. Like he could come out and go well against Panthers because he had a shocker last week and he really wants to you know, avenge um, their loss in that team and, and go out and play really well. If that's the case, even if he gets a 60 odd this week and then he goes 100 next week against the Warriors, then it was a waste of trade because that's an 80 average over two weeks. Even if he comes out and goes a little bit low, you then look at their run after that and they have a, a, a few nice easy teams. So... You really, you're really going to want Tommy then, aren't you? So there's no point, I think, making those trades. If you... Look, if you still... Like if, the only really one there would be if you had Walsh or something like that, that I'd go, well, yeah, trade him out to one of these guys. But outside of that, it, it seems a bit of like a silly one to potentially trade him out. Uh, and the only one I did forget in the 5'8 position is that of Jaden Campbell. So I think he picked up a 48 this week, just gone. 48 it was. And uh, I definitely think he's an option, but Titans being very, very poor... It's hard to suggest that he is the clear guy to pick up. But um, yeah, definitely someone uh, of note. If you did want a 5.8, he's probably the only one actually that I would mention as a as a solid buy for you this week. 
Kale Iro. Wait to see what happens with him next week if Talakai goes back to the centers or if, if Kale ends up in that uh, spot again. So that's the buy, hold, risk it, and sell for the week for Supercoach, guys. Thank you so much for, for being a part of it. Thank you, yeah, obviously just for just for watching these. It's um, a, a smaller audience, my Supercoach guys, but I appreciate every one of you. Um, so let me know in the comments if you're a Supercoach uh, legend and, and you've um, yeah, what rank you're in at the moment and, and how you're looking. So that's it. See you later.